Okay, so, good afternoon everybody, all of the attendees here at this FX Street webinar. Welcome and thank you for attending. I can see that we have uh, Paul Volker on the line today, so if you've got any comments on the Fed decision later on, please feel free to let us know. <laughs> but um, in today's session, we're going to talk about the early session breakout. Okay, now basically this is a technique um, that I've used before. I don't use it so much anymore because you guys know I love my range, range bar stuff. Um, and I've got a specific way of trading that. However, this is something that, that can be very, very profitable. However, you have to be quite disciplined and wait for the right setups. But when you do get the right setups, you can get some really good moves off of this. Now, you'll notice I've put here early session breakout. Okay, so what, I, what ultimately I'm trying to say here is it doesn't matter which session you're trading. Um, so whether it be the London, the New York, or the, the Tokyo, ultimately this is a technique that you can use for, for any breakout, really, more or less. Um, and yeah, so we'll, we'll get into the meat of that in a second when we get into the system. Before we do go any further, of course, we need to do our disclaimer. And that's basically to say that the content of this webinar is not for investment advice. It's purely for educational purposes only, okay? If you guys like anything that you see in here, then obviously you can't go and trade it blindly. Go and do your back testing, which will be a good thing anyway, because it will give you confidence in your system. Um, and ultimately, ultimately, you have to make your own decisions. Okay, now that we've got that out of the way, a little introduction to myself. Um, for those of you who have not been on here before, not spoken or heard heard, blah, blah, heard me talk before. Okay, my name is Alex Ong. I'm the co-founder of a website called Traders Corner Online. Um, and that's ultimately an educational website teaching people how to trade. I've been trading the market since about 2005, and we've um, co-authored articles, books, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So we've been around for quite a while now. We trade our own accounts, and we teach other people how to trade. If you want to follow me, you can do so by following me on Twitter at Alexong UK. Other than that, that's enough about me. Let's talk more about the markets. So before we go any further, can I ask? Has anybody on here, have any of you guys ever traded a breakout system before? Whether it be an early session breakout, have you ever traded that sort of a system before? No, nope, no one, excellent, yes, no. <laughs> Hi Kevin, yes, okay. Now, for those of you that have traded such a system, or those of you that haven't but can take a guess, what what seems to be one of the biggest problems that you guys that you tend to fall into when trading breakout systems? I'm hoping one of you will say it, otherwise obviously I'll fill in the blank. False breakouts, there we go. False breakouts will now yep, yeah, it's the fake ones. Now that's something that I hate as well. And ultimately, the, the, we put this, the way this system works is it tries to get or eliminate those false breakouts. Okay, now it's not saying that you're going to get rid of them altogether because there's no such thing as a 100% system. But the way that we trade breakouts and the way that we have done historically, obviously before the range bar trading system, um, the way we trade them was ultimately to try and eliminate the false breakouts. So we want to be involved in the, in the momentum move but we can't stand getting in and getting whipped out and getting back in and getting whipped back out and all of that kind of stuff, right? So that's ultimately the way that we've designed the system. Now, one of the problems with the way that you trade the system is that you will miss some of those big, 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 big momentum moves. You will miss them. There's nothing you can do about those because, you know, sometimes a breakout will occur and it will just give you no opportunity to get in. But by the, but by the you know, other side of the coin, you will also eliminate some losses from trading this way because ultimately what we'll be doing, and you'll see that in a second, is you trade the first pullback after the breakout. Now that's just, and for any of you guys that have been watching some of the the webinars that uh, I've done in the past, you'll see that that's sort of like a common theme um, about the way that I trade. Whatever system it is, I hate, I hate, oh, I absolutely hate buying like the ultimate highs and all of that kind of stuff. I'd much pr prefer to trade the pullback, either the one, two, three, or a candlestick reversing, or a trend line break. Now, yes, you can you can trade the the highs off of little consolidation areas, but I just I hate being the first to the party, so to speak. So I like to see that ultimately 
there is some movement in the market. And once I've seen that, then I'm willing to get in. Okay, now that does mean that you miss some trades, but it does keep you out of others as well. So, you know, I'm a little like like who? Sam Sam Steven. Maybe. I'm I'm not sure, Magnet, possibly. But I'm very conservative in that in that sense. So back to this to this um system. It's a momentum system. Okay, it does require screen time to enter the trade. Once you're in the trade, depending on how you exit, you can you can almost set and forget it, depending on how you exit. Okay. But it does require you to be to be in front of the screen to take the trade. There are some breakout systems where they say ultimately just bracket the the high and the low of the of the um, breakout area of the congestion zone and buy the top and sell the bottom. That's fine. But as I said, the way that we trade this is not to do that. Ultimately, the way that we're trading this is to trade the first pullback, and you don't know where that first pullback is going to be. Hence, it requires you to sit in front of the screen to trade this. However, you can trade this during any session. So if you're, you know, if you're going to trade some of the Asian currencies or whatever, and they move more in the Asian session, then you can use that in the Asian session. It's not something that's specific to the London Open. And for you guys in the US, you don't necessarily have to wake up at one, two o'clock in the morning to trade this. You can use the same approach to trade the breakout of the New York session. Okay? So it requires screen time. It's a conservative approach to playing breakouts. Now, ultimately, that means that you're going to miss some, and there's absolutely nothing we can do about that, okay? But as I said, that's the way that I trade, and I wouldn't dream of teaching you guys to do something that I don't do myself. And unfortunately, that means a lot of the approaches are conservative. But if you are a little bit more aggressive, then, you know, you can find ways and means to, to help it fit your personality. Now, we try to eliminate as many false signals as possible. Okay, now that, that obviously goes with the conservative nature of the system. It's indicator free, so we're not looking to use, you can use indicators if you want, but it's literally just core technical analysis. So, you know, some trend lines, horizontal lines, and that's literally it. And it can be traded on any pair. All right, so that's the basis of the system so far. So the rules. Okay, we'll just go over the rules quickly, then we'll try and go and find some some examples on our charts. The the rules are, you're looking for a trending market. You're looking for a market that is going in a particular direction. There's no point in trading in the middle of a hugely range ground market. Now, when I say trending, I'm not saying that ultimately you need weeks and weeks and weeks worth of a trend, because you're so close to the market for the system. Ultimately, what you want is ideally you want the previous day to be a big momentum day okay, or look like it's going in that direction. So you want the previous price action, yesterday's price action, not to be too congested and too, um, you know, disgusting, so to speak. You want it to be pretty price action. You want the markets to be harmonic, right? So we're looking for a trending market. That means an aesthetically pleasing chart. What you will then do is you then bracket the range of the previous session. Now, th this... It is as easy as saying bracket the high and the low, but there are some instances when there's been such a move towards the very, very beginning of the previous session and then nothing for the rest of the session, in which case you can feel free to bracket the, you know, the, the core range, so to speak. Now, this comes with a bit of experience, but as you get to watch the markets more, ultimately you'll see what, what I'm seeing in the markets, and that is you're just looking for the congestion zone. So, there will be some instances on the chart when you see a big move and you think, well, that's like a 100 pip range. You don't need to bracket that range there. All you need to do in that instance is just bracket the last part of the congestion area, and then you're looking for another breakout of that area. But that will more will become clear when we get onto the charts. Once you bracket the range, you need to wait for the breakout. Now, there's no point anticipating the breakout. That's not what we're doing here. So even if it looks like the markets are moving and moving and moving, don't be tempted to jump in. We're waiting for confirmation here. Okay, guys? We're waiting for, for to see momentum in the market. We're waiting for the actual breakout. We're not trying to predict the future. And that's something, you know, even if you don't trade this particular system, that's something with any other system that you guys really should get on board with, is that you're looking that you're not predicting the future. You're just reacting to the price action. So we wait for the breakout. Now, the breakout must show some sort of momentum. Now, I'm not saying that it needs to go, you know, miles and miles away from the breakout area, but the candle leading up to the breakout must show that it has momentum in there. You're not looking for sort of small doji-type candles meandering their way higher, just 
grinding higher and higher and higher because that doesn't show us that there's any conviction there in the breakout. When it gets towards the breakout zone, we want to see momentum build up there because that means the rest of the market are looking at this. Does that make sense to you guys so far? Excellent. So once we've got the breakout and the breakout shows momentum, you're waiting for the first pullback. Now here I've said a retest of the range boundary is the best setup. The reason that I say this is that a retest of the range boundary and the price holding at or within that sort of area shows you that the rest of the market are paying attention to this area and hence it gives you a higher probability move. But that doesn't mean that you can't trade the pullback if it doesn't come back to the range boundary. You still can do that. I'm just saying that the, the best move seems to come when you get a little bit of a breakout, a nice pullback to the range boundary, and then another attempt. And once you get that, that kind of says, okay, so now we're making higher highs and higher lows, or low lows and lower highs. The market's respected the range boundary, so obviously it's a previous level of support or resistance, which becomes support or resistance after the break. So you've got a few technical things going for you there, all right? So you're waiting for the first pullback. Once you get the first pullback, you can enter on a resumption of the breakout. Now that can be the high or the low. So if it's a little congestion zone and it isn't much of a pullback, then you can trade the high or the low off of that. It could be a price action. So if you get a big momentum move and then you get um, a pullback to that area, you could trade a one, two, three reversal or a candlestick reversal pattern or something like that. Or you could trade something as simple as a trend line break. Now I really leave it up to you guys as to what you know method you will use to get get in on the resumption of the trend. But ultimately, we use we use all of these at one point or another. It just depends on what makes most sense at that particular time. Okay? Do you guys have that? Is there any questions so far on the pullback or the entering on the resumption? Sorry, that was strange. I was talking to myself there for a second. All right. So where did we get to? Have um, yes, yes. Okay. <laughs> Sorry about that, guys. Um, all right, so before I went off on my monologue, I was asking you guys if that all makes sense. Okay, we'll come to that in a second, GY. That's, so that all makes sense. Excellent. Arsenal, yay! <laughs> that makes sense. So, once we've entered on the resumption of the trend, we're then looking to place our stop behind the swing. Okay, now the reason that I put it behind the swing is that Basically, I feel like if it breaks the swing, it's going to break back down into the range. And if it breaks back down into the range, then kind of the, the setup is invalidated. Having said that, there are those of you that, that would prefer not to place it behind the swing and would prefer to place it around the other side of the range. Okay, so let's say, for example, you're buying the high, you would then put it below the low of the range. And that's perfectly fine, too. Um, that's not a problem. Obviously, you're just looking for bigger profit targets then. But... From my personal perspective, I like to place it behind the swing because I feel like if this particular move has momentum and it's meant to go in that direction, it's not going to come back into the range. If it does, something's wrong. But that's just my personal perspective, okay? Um, if you wanted to put it around the other side of the range, there's nothing wrong with that whatsoever. And then you take profit according to your own personality. Now, the reason that I put this here is that everybody is different, okay? Some people like to trail their stops. Some people like to you know, go for, you know, one ATR or 75% of the average true range for that session or whatever. So everybody is different. Now, personally, the way that, the way that I like to play this is at least be looking for one to one and more often than not looking to trade up until the next resistance area or down until the next support area or sort of five or 10 pips below before that. Okay. So I like to use areas on the chart as reasons to get out of the trade, but obviously, it's completely down to you guys, and you guys can decide for yourselves how best you would like to, to trail your stops and how best you would like to exit the trades, okay? That's the end of the presentation. We can now go and start looking at some charts. But before we do that, um, let's have a very quick debate. Who here is in favor of set profit targets? Okay. Who here? Okay, you like it? You like it? Kevin likes to let it ride. Not you, okay. If you don't like set profit targets, do you prefer to let it ride or trail your stops, partial, half ride, half set up? Excellent. Okay, now you know what this shows you. 
it shows you that that last line there completes sense because if I said to you and exit at x or exit at y, you know, every single, very, a lot of you there have put in very different answers. And for that reason, that's exactly, I'm demonstrating, that's exactly why I put that there. Because everybody's different. Now, I've given you a very, very good entry strategy here. The exits, which obviously, you know, they're difficult to, to determine, but you can use your favorite exit strategy for this. Because ultimately, you're expecting momentum in the market with this move, so you will get a move somewhere. Where you get out is completely down to yourself. Okay, so is everybody happy with that so far? Does anybody have any questions at all? Yes, sorry, Magnet. Yes, sorry, I forgot to say that. Yes, we look at something like, I mean, ultimately, the chart that you use to, to, to look for the range isn't that important. You'd use something like a 15-minute or a 30-minute chart to do that. I haven't got the charts up yet, Paul Volker. I'll put them up in a second. Um, all right, so the, yes, we use a lot, something like a 15-minute chart to identify the range. Once you've identified the range, then you drop down to a five-minute chart. Okay, a five-minute chart will then allow you to see the pullback. The problem with the 15-minute chart is sometimes the whole move goes in those 15-minute candles, and it doesn't really give you an opportunity to get in. Of course, you could um, you could actually combine this with range bars, I guess, and use the range bars as your entry but use the time-based chart just to bracket the range and trade trade accordingly. So, you know, there are many, many ways that you can skin this cat. And um, with that, let's, let's move on to the charts and see if we can spot a few setups. So you should now be able to see a chart. Now, can you all see a chart here? Okay, excellent. So let's take a look to see what what ultimately we're looking for. So let's go to today's price action. Okay, we're on the euro dollar at the moment. And what we'd be looking to do is bracket the high and the low of the range. Okay, so for this particular Asian session here, I mean, that's yesterday's day. So the Asian session, you'd be looking at kind of this round here around midnight through to about 8 o'clock in the morning. Okay, so that would be, we've got the highs there and the lows would be somewhere around 215. You'd want it to contain that price action, so I'd have the low in there. So you can see we haven't actually had an opportunity to trade today. All right, so let's go back to yesterday and bracket the range some more. Yesterday, where are we looking? We don't want you. Okay, so this is yesterday's range. All right, this would be the high here, and this would be the low. And it just so happens that um, using yesterday's range, we can actually see why getting in on the first break isn't always the best idea. So let me just go back to that now. Okay, so this is yesterday's price action. This is the range. As you can see, that's the low, that's the high of the range. And ultimately, we're looking to trade the first pullback. So here, this would have been a false breakout. You would have been taken out of that. So you weren't looking to take that. Here you get another nice spike. Um, but it doesn't really come to anything until eventually you don't get a spike or a whip through it, but you actually get a move. You then get to pull back in that move. And remember what, what I said about it, it testing the the, um, the range again? That's exactly what it's doing here. It's come back to this level and it's holding above that level. Okay, it's not. it hasn't come back into it and it hasn't started trading again. And you would then look to, to trade. For me personally, the way you would trade this one here, you would trade through the tops of these candles here, okay? You trade through the tops here because what this is doing here, this is a little mini congestion area here. You'd have your stop below that, trade through the top, and taking profit, taking profit as you like. Does that make sense? Looking at that setup there, does it make sense to you guys now why I personally don't like getting in on the first move? Because the first move can always, you know, whip you out and it can cause you a whole heap of issues. All right, so this, yesterday, that's yesterday's price action, and that's actually a perfect example of why you would trade the system like this, as opposed to trying to trade it on the initial break, because you would have been in there, depending on where your profit target is, you're either take profit or you're out. Same again here, and you're kind of just chasing your tail all day. Whereas when you get the first move that holds above the range, then you seem to see that the move continues. 
right? So let's go back in time. Now, you're not going to get an entry every single day with this, okay? If you get an entry every single day, then um, you're obviously looking for it too hard. But the, ultimately, what you're looking for is you're looking to trade the, the highest probability setups. Now, here, look, this will be an example of trading the UK session, right? So that's the UK high. That's the UK low, as you can see there, right? That's the high, that's the low. I mean, that's 12.50, right? So before 1 o'clock, before the US session, our first move, what happens? We get a move above. The market holds above that range, and then it decides to rally off on its merry way. And that's exactly what we're looking for, right? So this, that shows you that it's not just something you can do on the UK set, on the US session or the Tokyo session or whatever. You can literally do it in any session. You just need to learn how to bracket your ranges. And once you know how to do that, this is, this is a very, very good trading system and can sort of provide your bread and butter. And you can trade it on any pair as well. Just make sure that you're not getting into many trades at the same time because often you'll see that if one of the majors are setting up, then the other one will be as well. Okay. Um, let's go back again. So this is the Asian session. So 435, that's about the high there. And the low is around this guy over here. Now, the market rallies off, comes back, gives you an opportunity to enter, and this one would have ended up with a stop, which would have stopped you out. But the first target for it is completely down to yourself. Okay, so you, you need to decide for yourself where you like the first target. I haven't put that in there intentionally because, as you can see from above, it's, it's, it's down to every individual. If you, you can move your stop to break even if you like, uh, but obviously you don't have to. Okay. Um, but here's an example of a losing trade, all right? So not all of these win. Some of them just come and stop you out. And by the time it stops you out, then it's the end of the session anyway, and you'd be getting ready for the U.S. session, which would have been that previous one there, all right? But you're looking for nice price action, containable price action. Um, you don't want lots of lots of choppiness everywhere. That isn't. I'm not. This isn't choppiness here, but I'm talking like this. It hasn't gone anywhere in days. Once that happens, then then you're not looking to trade that sort of a market. For example, if you close your target to two to one, I don't have uh, statistics on that, unfortunately. I mean, ultimately, if you're looking, if you say on a one-to-one -one basis, you'd want to be getting seven, seven out of ten trades correctly. And then, obviously, as you increase your, if you're, as you're increasing your profit targets, your strike rate will drop, but your profitability will probably go up. That's just that's the way these, these correlations work, all right? Now here, if you take a look at this range here, this is an Asian session, and as you can see, by, by not trading the, the first breakout, you weren't taken into any of this crud over there. Let's go look for a more, a more trending market, a market that's moving a little more. Okay, so we've got the move up here. This is going to be a close. That would have been Friday's close, so let's bracket this range. Give me a second. And it's literally as simple as this, guys. Okay, as I said, it's not a 100% system. It's not going to um, eliminate all of your losses. Where is that? 23, 25, 1, 2. Okay, so that would be the Asian session. Okay? And as you can see, you get the breakout there. That's round, so we wouldn't even be trading that time. You get the breakout here. It comes back into the range. Okay? And that and that's the sort of thing you don't want to be trading. You get the breakout here, brings you into a little bit of profit, excuse me, um, and then stops you out. But that's that's the nature of of trading these sorts of systems. You will be stopped out, okay? But when you get the trending markets like these here, you'll see that the markets then actually do start to pay you. Do we have any questions so far? No, so just keep going back. So what do we have here? Let's look at this one. So where are we? That would be 7 o'clock, 7.15, 7.30, 8 o'clock. All right, so that's our range. Okay. We like this kind of price action, by the way. This sort of tight price action going nowhere, That we like that. That's what we like to see. All right, we get the breakout of this here. Uh, you get taken into a little bit of profit. Hold on, someone's... I'm very popular this morning. Let me turn my phone off for you a second. Someone's selling me PPI insurance. Wonderful. 
you get stopped out, but you can you got the second entry there and you get the move up. You then bracket this range. What are we doing with this here? And so on and so forth. So is this starts is this starting to make sense to you guys? The bracketing of the ranges is for a particular session. Yes, Kevin. I mean ultimately you don't even we, we call it a session, but you don't even need to call it a do it by the session. You can trade this literally just looking for breakouts of congestion areas because periods of low volatility always, you know, are succeeded by periods of high volatility. So you want to see this kind of stuff here, this really, really, really tight coiling range, and then you get the big moves out of it. Okay. These sorts of things here, where you've got a big range, is not so much because that's showing you that there's quite, that the markets don't quite know where they're going. This kind of here, this is disgusting. This is just a complete disgrace of a chart, and the only way you're trading this is trading the bouncy. What you want to see, and it's quite difficult for going into you know, the beginning of the month here in August, but what you want to see is you want to see momentum moves, not this. This is not a momentum move. This is a disgrace. Okay, you want to see momentum moves followed by periods of consolidation like that where the market goes nowhere, followed by further momentum moves and so on and so forth. So does anybody have any questions or have I just done such a great job of explaining this that you guys know questions and you're ready to roll? No one? No problem, Kevin. And by the way, you see these moves here? This is why we like range bars. Because you see that move, there's no opportunity to get in on that. Trading the range bars, you would have had a pullback in there and you would have been able to get in. So, Srini, the, the R and R expected is completely down to the way that you exit the trade. Some people here like to exit the trade by tra by trailing their stops on a pullback. Okay, some people like set profit targets. So it's really difficult to give a, a hard and fast sort of statistic there. Excellent, Zatilis. But do you trade the pullback after the after the the high or low of the day is broken, or you just trade initially on the break? Because maybe this is something that you can incorporate to get your strike rate up. Because I promise you, it definitely, definitely gets your strike rate up. As this is August, which was just a horrendous month. So you go back before August, July, you'll see actual moves in the market. Okay, only in the direction. That's fair enough. And you just put your stop below the low. Adding positions. Wonderful. Srini, you place your stop behind the swing. Okay, so imagine this was our breakout here. We would place our stop behind this swing here. This would be the swing down. You place your stop behind there. Because what we're trying to say to ourselves is if the market comes down to that and takes me out, then I no longer want to be in that position. Yep, you can trade the one, two, three pattern. So, you know, you can consider this sort of like a one, two, three. So for example, you could say that when the when we get the pullback, let's let's say that this is this is no man's land, but let's just say for example this was a trade. You get a breakout there, you get a pullback, that's one, two, three. You trade the top of three of um, two off there and you're in and you follow it up. So yes, you can. Trini, the initial stop loss is behind the swing. Does that make sense, Trini? Your initial stop loss is behind the swing. That there. Also behind the swing. Excellent. And where's your risk reward at one, two, three? I don't, sorry, I don't follow up. That Schwage, Schwage, is that how I pronounce it? Sorry if I'm offending you there. Okay, but ultimately, just to recap, guys, all right, oh, hold on, would you take the break of the breakout initial move? Would you take, would you trade the break of the breakout? The initial momentum move? No, not really, because 
there are so many times that that initial move turns out to be absolutely nothing. So for me personally, I wouldn't be looking to trade that. But this this here, guys, these are the sorts of markets. These are showing you days, right? These are the sorts of markets you don't want to be trading in because there's no direction here. Okay, this is the stuff you want to stay away from. All right, so this where it's going up, it's coming down, it's going up, it's coming down, it's going up, it's coming down, it's going nowhere. All right, so if you look there from the 5th of September back to the 8th of August, you're pretty much in exactly the same position. So they're the, the markets you want to stay away from. Okay, what you want to see, which we haven't seen on this chart yet because we're still, you want to see this kind of price action. Okay, so momentum move, momentum move, momentum move. That's what you want to be trading. Okay, you do not want to be trading this here. Okay, this is disgusting. That that I don't even know what that is. That why 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 would that have such a large work? That's you see what I mean? That's there's no point. That's that's horrendous. Okay. Uh, Magnet, this is a strategy that I discovered many, many, many years ago and I traded it probably for about uh a year, eighteen months before I got interested in other things. It's not to say it didn't work, it just it just wasn't it wasn't something that I I got a little bit bored if you if if you like. Yep, it's the same strategy. The the thing with this strategy guys and the thing with everything that I show you is that it's not necessarily specific to any one currency pair. I prefer when I'm day trading focusing on one currency pair, but the strategies that I show you they work for every every different type of instrument. Okay, and there's actually one guy in here who um, I won't necessarily name him. He can make himself known if he wants to. But there's one guy in here who we've worked with, and um, he uses the strategies that we show him, and he uses them on many many different um, different instruments. So he'll use them not just on FX, but he'll use them on commodities. He'll use them on the indices, and he's actually very successful at doing that. And the reason that we we show you these things the way that we show you them is that it's so that you can take them to other time frames, other instruments. So you're not set by saying, okay, this has to be 10 pips. And if you're trading the pound yen, then 10 pips, you know, the market sneezes and you're taken out. You obviously, by placing your stop behind the swings, okay, placing your stop behind places like this, that's a price action thing. That's not necessarily, that's not something that's specific to any one pair. That's price action, which would then allow you to take this over to a pound yen. So I don't follow you, pound yen. Okay, so he's made himself known. <laughs> it's Kevin down there at the bottom. Okay, he's one of the guys that we've worked with and he is very, very, in fact, he should actually be up here and he should give you, give you a presentation one day because he's very good at this now as well. He literally trades anything that moves. So any other questions at all, people? Let's see. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Okay. So that there would, that there, this is the pound yen, that would be a breakout. I'm not advising anybody here, anyone, to take this trade. Okay, I'm just answering a question. So <laughs> I'm answering a question for anybody here, that, for the person here that's asking the question about the pound yen. I'm not telling you to take this trade, but please do not take it as that. But yes, okay, this here, that represents, that's nice price action. We've got a nice momentum move down. You would then expect this pullback to be followed by another momentum move in that direction. Oh, thank you very much, Kevin. We'll give we'll give you the money for that later. <laughs> Any questions at all, guys? <laughs> Indeed. Just in case you guys are wondering what that's about at the bottom of the screen here, Kevin um, Kevin attended one of our seminars back in February um, and her mother was there and she put on some of the catering 
and provided some nice donuts and pastries and croissants and all of that good stuff. So. Shrini, I've taken many trades this week, um, but not trading the system. I don't actually, as I said to you before, this isn't, I focus mainly on the range bar trading systems. But the reason that we put this presentation together is because it can still work, it does still work. Um, and not everybody wants to trade the range bar trading system. So what we're trying to do here is to give you guys a variety of different trading systems so you can pick something that works for yourself, for your personality, and for your schedule. Okay? Yeah, so we would try and trade it. We would trigger off of the five minute chart, but you'd look at like the 15 or 30 minute chart to bracket the range. So you would trigger off of this chart right here. <laughs> Kevin, you couldn't put on weight if you tried. I'm convinced of this. You're the type of person, you're like my brother, you're the type of person I hate. You can eat as much as you want and never ever put on weight. I, on the other hand, thinking about the pastries at the moment, I'm convinced I've just lost the belt size. So guys, any other questions at all? Okay, if you don't have any other questions, what's about for future webinars that we do for FX Street? What would you guys like to know about? What would you like to learn? Because, you know, we can put together different presentations all day long, but we want to make them relevant for you. We want to make them something that you guys enjoy and something that you guys can, can learn from. So how about a few suggestions for something you'd like on a future webinar? Then we can take that into account and try and put together a presentation based on that. Trend lines. Long term as in fundamental trading? I'll get my brother on here to do that one. Okay, Kevin, no problem. What techniques the banks use? Well, I can't speak for every every bank or every bank trader, but I can tell you a friend of mine who worked at um oops, what's going on here? A friend of ours that worked at um JP Morgan and Goldman Sachs. He, he likes using trend lines and horizontal lines of support and resistance. He also uses the Ichimoku cloud when he trades the, the yen pairs and the, ultimately that what, what he said to, what he said to us during discussions is that he trades whatever the majority of the markets are trading. So he knows that a lot of people in Asia and in Japan will be using Ichimoku cloud. Therefore, he'll have that on his chart so that he knows what the rest of the markets are looking at. But his sort of primary primary tool is, um, you know, horizontal lines of support and resistance and trend lines um, with a little bit of fundamentals to back it up. You like correlated markets? No problem, trend lines. Recipe of my mom's cakes? I can give you that now, try and trade up. If you, if you get a pen, what you need is Access to a Sainsbury's or Marks and Spencer's or something like that. <laughs> the means to get there and the cash to purchase. That's the recipe for the cakes. Yes, I am, Srini. Yes, they do use analysis market. Of course they do. You can see where all the trades are now, but that doesn't, you know, they can't jump in and out as quickly as we can. <laughs> I love that train trader. My credit card number. Unfortunately, my wife owns that, so you'll have to fight her for it. Thank <laughs> you. 
<laughs> no problem, Trini. Yep, no problem, man. Please go ahead. We've got a few minutes, so please. Do you know if the banks also look at 100 and 200 SMAs? I don't off the top of my head, Kevin, but I can ask. I mean, it's a, you know, not every bank is not going to be the same, but I can ask a couple of people if they have them on their chart. A seminar on the business model and workings of Forex brokerages. Manoy, unfortunately, I wouldn't have a clue. Um, I've never worked at a brokerage, so I don't know how they work. So unfortunately, that's not something I can help you with. Sorry about that. Yes, we can. So we'll do one on entries and exits. You're Aussie. We can do one. I mean, we don't need to do your seminar, uh, a webinar specifically on the Euro Aussie, um, but you know the the techniques that we use can be used with the Euro Aussie as well. Do you think it might be advantageous as a means to keep the stop loss at times possible to use two four range bars? Seems sometimes at early range. Yes and no. I mean, to be honest with you, and you can do that, but the problem is is that you're you're much more likely to see more trades stopped out. Um, and then the market going in your direction. So that could be quite um, that can be quite a, a difficult way to trade psychologically. <laughs> I like that mark. Okay, we'll talk more about entries and exits, different entries and exit techniques, that's not a reason. Okay, Kevin. Well, I'll find out about the 100 and 200 SMA. I've heard that used many times before, but as I said, I can't tell you categorically that's the case. Manoy, unfortunately, the, the issue with the banks, and I don't know if that, this has changed now, but the problem with the banks is that they took away your prop desk. Okay, so the, the, a lot of the bank traders are now are more just kind of filling orders and things. Um, yeah, filling orders for, for their clients. I mean, my brother is on the line. I don't know if he wants to chime in here and write a sentence or two on that. But ultimately, you know, it, it would be very difficult, unfortunately, to have long-term success as a retail trader and go and work for a bank. You could go and work for a prop firm, though. There's no reason why you couldn't take your track record and show it to a prop firm. That's That's very possible. Is everything algorithmic then? Not everything, but a lot definitely is. Srini, what man, I think they take very young guys to be sorry. Um yeah, I mean I'm I'm not sure that's always the case because you know, if you if you're good enough then I don't necessarily think it it matters what age you are. Um, but of course, yeah, they'd be looking for people that are coming out of sort of like Ivy League unis um, and stuff like that. Is there a directory of prop firms? Not that I know of, Manoy, but I'm sure if you type in, you know, proprietary trading firm London, you'll find a couple come up. There's, there's actually a few in North London uh, that you can look into if you like. For the life of me, I can't remember the name of them, but they do exist. Few techs, actually, I've heard of them, yep. Will we think of setting up a prop firm? Not sure, Kevin. Maybe maybe in the future. At this second in time, no, but possibly in the future. I know that, Kevin. Don't worry. You'll be the first person we call. Don't worry. Okay, guys, well, if um, there are no more questions, we'll take into account what you were talking about with regards to future trainings. And <laughs> we'll give you all the pastries you want, Kevin, not a problem. 
Um, and you've made me forget what I was talking about. Yes, okay. We will take into account all of your suggestions regarding future webinars, and we'll put those together so that you guys have something um, to look forward to in the coming weeks and months and all of that good stuff. If you have any questions, as always, please feel free to email us. Um, the email, I'll put it in at the bottom here. If you give me a second. Stop sharing that. That's the email address there. So if you have any questions whatsoever, please feel free to email us. Um, we're going to be doing a um, an online boot camp in the middle of October. So if you're interested in that, please also feel free to email us. We'll give you all of the details for that. That's going to be a really cool one. Um, we're going to go through our day trading, the range bar trading systems, um, and literally give you absolutely everything that we use every day, day in, day out. To trade that system, we'll go through plenty of example trades. It's just going to be a really, really good two-day online seminar event. So, yep, email us about that. Otherwise, thank you very much for watching, as always. It's a pleasure doing this for you guys at FX Street. Vicky, Moore, Dadinda, um, thank you so much for having us, and we look forward to coming back here again in a few weeks' time. Take care now, and speak to you all soon.